Thou are saying that was the easiest assignment we've had this year. Anyway, I do have to record today. Welcome those of you listening to the Regal. Bless you, Carissa. We are going to start right here and review some of the quizzes from yesterday just to make sure we have what's leading up to this down. So, and I'm just going to do them with you to save some time, but you should be doing them with me. The first one gives you the first derivative of a function, so always make sure you know what level you're on. Then look at what you're being asked for and decide if it is if I need that level or if I need... For now, you can only move a level up. Like You, you only know how to go from f to f prime, f prime to f double. Um, once we get into second semester, integration is the reverse. So it moves you, like if you know acceleration, it moves you back down to velocity. Or if you know that the rate that the water or oil is leaking, you can find how many gallons leaked. But for now, we can only take a derivative. And relative extrema deal with the first derivative. So we're going to take and make a sine line for our first derivative. It has three critical values. What are they, Tristan? Uh, zero, three, yep, so zero, three, and negative one are places where the derivative equals zero. It exists everywhere. There's no, it's not breaking any legalities here. But if there is also like a x on the bottom, then x equals zero would be a d and e. But anyway, we already have this guy here. We do a little sign analysis. This won't affect the signs because it's always positive. So I wouldn't waste time plugging numbers into that. I would just go grab a negative 2 and say when I have a negative 2 in here, that'll be negative and this will be negative. The function is increasing from negative infinity to negative 1. When a function's derivative is positive, it is increasing. Next step, um, at negative a half, again, I don't need to look at that. I'd have a negative from here and a positive from there, so the function would be decreasing. I for sure have a max at negative 1. And then, if I do a positive a half, it looks like I'll go positive, positive. If I do a positive, like say 5, I'm also going to have all positives. By the way, whenever you see something like this, a quantity squared, it does cause a bounce like that off the graph. I think you learned that, I think in pre-calc they call it multiplicity or something. But it always causes a repeat in sign like this. So what this means is a function was increasing, hit negative 1, decreased, and then increased, hit a plateau, and continued. That's what the original function would have looked like. So we're at A, negative 1 over. How'd that go? Thumbs up, man? All right. The next one, a lot of people got wrong. The most common wrong answer was 2. I think it came from one of two mistakes, either finding the zeros of this and saying there's one, two zeros. Those would be x-intercepts of the graph of f, right? Those are critical points. Those have to do with the derivative equaling zero. So, Cage, what rule would I use of all my rules to take the derivative of this product? Product rule. Thank you! <laughs> so, we'll do first d second, which is chain rule, for x minus 3 cubit derivative of the guts is 1. That's easy, right, Avery? Yeah. Plus... First d second plus second d first, which would be 5 times x plus 2 to the fourth times the derivative of its guts, which is 1. I then think some people went like this. If they went this far, they said, oh, negative 2 and 3. But when you're using the zero product property, you have to have a product. So this is a sum. You actually need to factor this. Tyler, what can I pull out of? Both terms. Um, x plus 2 fourths and uh, x minus 3 third. Perfect. And then I'm going to put beefy brackets down and then I'm going to discuss timing. But I am going to complete this one just because we haven't done this common binomial factoring very often. And if it said what are the critical points, I'd have to take this one all the way. So I need another x plus 2 in this one to get the fifth, and I need the four. And then on this one, I need the five, and it looks like I need another x minus three. Right? Looks good, doesn't it? If I clean up in here, I'd have a four x and a five x. And I know I'm going fast, but you did these yesterday, and half of you did these, right? I picked the ones that more than half had wrong, but around half. And then I'd have an eight, and a minus 15, or minus seven. How many critical values are there? How many values for x would make this product of 1, 2, 3, 
thing is equal to zero, 3. Um, so actually, if it were me, like when I make a key, I would have stopped the minute I put these brackets down. Because it doesn't say what is, what are they, it says how many. So I would have gotten negative 2, 3, and whatever makes that one 0. And I wouldn't have cared what it was. Does that make sense? Like when you're taking a time to exam? But if it asks for what they were, it kind of you. Next up, bless you. It says we've got a function f, and we're on the interval from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. That satisfies the conclusion of the mean value theorem. That conclusion needs to be memorized. Bethany, do you remember what you get to conclude with the mean value theorem? You can even just say it in words or... That's exactly what I was hoping she was going to say. Because that's what I hope you guys... That's easy to remember. Visually, they have to run parallel to each other. And then that should trigger the formula. So to find the slope of a secant line, you do the change in y over the change in x, or y2 minus y1, or f of b. So I need to stick that into the f function, and I'd have sine of 3 pi over 2 over 2. So I'd have sine of 3 pi fourths for my, technically it's called the f of b, or in algebra 2, they called it the y sub 2, right, Alexa? And then when I put in a pi over 2 or my f of a, get my y sub 1, I'd have pi over 2 over 2. So that'd be sine of pi over 4. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't really care what the denominator is. Anyone want to think be in my brain? Yeah, Chris. The top is 0. How come? Because sine of 3 pi over 4 is 0, and sine of pi over 4 is 0. Ooh, close. Sorry. Because 3 pi over 4 is negative 1, and pi over 4 is 1. Oh, sorry, that should have been a minus. One more time. It's 1 and 1. You go to 3 pi over 4 and pi over 4. You're close. They are the same. They're still 0. Yeah, I, the reason I didn't care is because the top is 0. But the bottom, I guess if I subtracted these two, I get 2 pi over 2 or just pi. But again, when you're on a timed test, sometimes I, know I don't really care what the bottom is. The top is 0 for sure. Now I'm going to ask you an even better question to see who's really got this chapter done. I could have said the conclusion to... A different theorem since I got a zero right there. What'd you say? Rolle's theorem. theorem. Yeah, Rolle's theorem says if they're at the same height, which they might, they are both at root two over two and root two over two. So Rolle's actually gets absorbed. You, you cannot know you're using it and it still works out the same. On this side, I have to set it equal to the derivative. So that's what the slope of the tangent line is. That's a little chain rule. Cosine x halves and then the derivative of the guts. Divide both sides by a half, and I need cosine of something over 2 to equal 0. Back to the unit circle, cosine here is 1, cosine here is 0, and that's pi over 2, right? So what does x have to be? Pi. Yep, the answer to that. <laughs> it's over here. All right, how's that? Good? All right, the next one is calculator active. So take out your calculators. Make sure if you're in AP Physics that you go back to your radian mode. I have mine up here. And again, we have to look at what level we're on to decide if we need to take a derivative. Because you could. You could easily say negative sine of this stuff times 3x squared minus 1 if you needed to move up a level to f double. So you have to see what the question's about. Like if it was about concavity or inflection points, before I go to my calculator, I'd have to take the derivative. Right? But this is the derivative, and I'm being asked about increasing. For a function to be increasing, its slopes or its derivative must be what? What must this? Yes, must have positive slopes. So if I graph that in my y equals, which I can save some time because I should have it up here from last hour. I hope I didn't delete it. Oh, uh, I did. You guys go graph it because I don't want to open that app again. I didn't mean to close it. So I'll tell you what it looked like from last hour, but you really ought to use your calculator when we do, just because you need to know how to use it. So in your y1, go ahead and enter the function. So understand that your y1 is going to represent f prime, or the slopes and the tangent lines, and you're going to enter the function as it is. 
you're gonna hit your window and make sure you go from zero to two by ones. And honestly, if you're looking for where the function's increasing, right? It does this doesn't really matter. I just go add negative three to three by ones for your y's, it won't really matter. I'm gonna have somebody pick graph for me. Can I steal yours? And it looks like it's kind of like this. There's a little kind of wave and it goes like this and like this on the interval. She doesn't curve. Kind of like that. And she set hers to go from one to two. Did your graph look like that, you guys? And it says, where's the function increasing? So from zero to right here, okay? And you need to calc intersect that off of Chris is it you could kind of see it was almost at like one and a half yeah. so I'm thinking it's 1.445 is my it's guess 1.445 like all right and then also over here so you're gonna have to calculate that one as well but to be honest you don't because it's gonna have to be that one right because it's an and and it's zero to 1.445 and that tail end so I'd save myself some time and not calc it. But my guess is it's a 1.875 because you already calc it, you guys. Yeah. yeah. All right. Did I go too fast on that one? Did I All right. So last one here. The derivative. It's really important to know about that it's the derivative. If it asks me about, again, concavity or inflection, I need to take another one. But this is a question about local maxes. We need to find where f prime changes from positive to negative, because then f would have gone up and then down. So I'm going to tell you that this will not affect anything. Tell me why. It's, yeah, exactly. It, if you didn't hear on the video, this is greater than zero no matter what. So it's not going to affect the critical values because it's not going to give me any. And it's not going to affect the science because it's always positive. You might say, why do they put that on there? It just messes with my head. So you have a good math sense. So for my F prime graph, my possible critical values are only going to come from that guy. This, positive no matter what. So then I just need to factor. And I told you, if you don't have a calculator, they factor, and they factor nicely. If you have a calculator, you would look for where it crosses the x-axis. What am I going to get? X plus 4? x plus 4 and an x minus 2, correct? So that supplies me with two critical values. This does absolutely nothing for this question. All right, so at negative 4, end at positive 2. And then I'm looking for a local max. You guys go make the sign line because I don't feel like plugging stuff in. And tell me if it goes minus, plus, minus, or plus, minus, plus. Well, I can already see the end's going to be positive. Let's do a zero is going to be negative. I guess that it's just as easy for me to do it myself. I'm feeling too lazy, but it's an easy one, right? So then I have to read. It says relative max. Where's their relative max at x equals? Yeah, this function went up, down, up. Not necessarily with that exact shape, but there. That's the last one, right? Notes for today. Very much and very important that you watch. All right, are you ready? And then you'll cruise through your homework. If you look at your homework, you still take a peek at it. It's in here. It's in this blank packet. Those of you watching the video, the homework and the notes are not what you already have. They're linked on the slide. You have to print those out. But if you go look at it, there's two worksheets. I told last hour, do worksheet A, check it. If it goes well, don't do B. All right, some people need more of these. If you do worksheet A and you go check it and you only got one wrong and you know what you did on it, then I wouldn't do B. But don't just not do B because you don't want to do B. <laughs> All right? So it's got that, you'll finish A in class. And if for homework you think you need to do B, take five minutes. It doesn't take long. You can see there's not even a number on it. You're going to be sketching some graphs. You won't be on your calculator because your calculator doesn't know how. All right? So I have to give you kind of some keys for how you're going to sketch them. You don't have to make tables. You don't have to, it's just not, it's, it'll be the easiest graph sketching you've ever done if you understand what you're doing. You're just going to look at it and go, oh, 
Done. That'd be sweet. <laughs> All right. So it says, recall when given the graph of f, f prime is the slope of the tangent lines. Okay. So the slopes of the graph of f are going to become the y values on the graph of f prime. You're going to be graphing f prime. So you're going to be thinking in your head, I am graphing slopes. I am graphing slopes. And when you're struggling, I'm going to say, remember, you're graphing slopes. slopes. And I'm going to say, what's the slope over here? And you go positive. I'm going to say, well, your y is better be positive. If I say, what's the slope over here? She goes, well, it's negative. I say, well, then your y better be negative. All right, so I'm going to be using that word slope a ton for those of you struggling. But first up, I just want to make sure you understand kind of how you orientate yourself on a graph of f prime. So this is f. In physics, that might be the graph of position or how something's moving. Any of you guys in AP physics? This is not, that's my, I think it's right now. So, but they get these graphs at the beginning of AP physics and they know velocity is the derivative, but they haven't had calculus yet. So they'll be finding like the velocity right there and they'll be like, oh, up to over one. It, the velocity is two, right? So when you're graphing f prime of negative two, it's the slope there, which is two. So your y value would be two on the graph of f prime. If I was graphing f prime, I would have a dot right there. Does that make sense, Alexa? If I was graphing f prime, I would do f prime of one, because it says two. And I go up here and say, well, what's the slope there? You guys go ahead and tell me, what's the slope there? Um, negative 1 over 3-ish. Yeah, down 1 over 3. So negative 1 over 3. So my y value at 1 for the graph of f prime would be at about negative 1. At three, what's the slope there? Zero. So my y value on my derivative graph would be zero. At five, what's the slope there? Negative one. So I have to, I'm graphing slopes. Graphing slopes, I'm graphing slopes. At six, the slope is still negative one. How I connect those points is going to be a thing we'll discuss later. But just note, when you're finding a specific point, you're looking for slopes. So our first graph is a line, and it's the graph of g. So I'm going to write y equals g, because later next week, you're going to be given either y equals g prime or g double. So you want to make sure you know what level you're on. It says plot the points for the graph of g prime, so the slopes on g, when x is negative 3. Are you ready? When x is negative 3, what's g prime? When x is negative 3, what's g prime? Negative 1. There'll be a dot right here. When x is negative 1, what's g prime? Negative 1. When x is 0, what's g prime? Negative 1. When x is 2, what's g prime? Negative 1 negative 1, it would have been negative 1 everywhere because that has curved, it's not curved. It has curved depravity. It's, it's, change is constant. Correct? Is that easy? That's easy, right? Now, down here I want you to do a little note. It didn't matter really how I drew that line as long as it was non-vertical. So I want you to go right here, put a dot at 0, 0. Let's do 1, 3, 2, 6. Let's go like that. If I was doing, let's suppose this was h of x, and I said, hey, Joel, graph the, draw the graph of h prime. He should immediately say the slope everywhere there is what? Three. Three. And he's done. OK? So let's do a little note here. What do you think any linear Functions ownership right? derivative graph 
is a what? Yes, as long as that was a non-vertical linear function, because those don't have derivatives, but is a horizontal line. Let's talk about why analytically and not just graphically for a second. I'm going to give you a line, Avery. Are you ready? H of x, h of x equals 3x minus 5. What's the derivative? Everywhere, right? h of x equals 4x minus 5. What's the derivative? 4, right? h of x equals negative a half x minus 72. What's the slope everywhere? Negative a half. They all translate linears, translate into horizontal lines. So you guys go graph this one. You have a line, boom, you're done. Then we have to add curvature to it, and then we have to add weird stuff to it. But first lines, then curves, then weird stuff. I said this will be the easiest graphing assignment you ever do if you understand it. You don't have to plot points. You don't have to make graph or charts or tables. You just look at that and go, well, this guy's derivative is what? Everywhere. Two. Right? It's going up two over one. Done. This is the graph of y prime of x. Or f of f prime of x. It's done. Now we're going to add some curves to it. Okay, so now you got to really listen a little bit more. When you add curvature to it, the slopes aren't constant. Like over here, it's very negative. Over here, it's slightly positive. The slopes are changing, correct? So we will have not a constant horizontal line. So first thing I'm going to tell you to do, the easiest thing is to find the horizontal tangents. So by that, I mean like right here, right here, and right here. What is the slope there? Zero. So when I'm in red, going to graph y equals h prime of x, right? This is where the derivative is zero. The derivative right here is zero. The derivative right here is zero. So when I'm graphing y equals the derivative, those horizontal tangent lines, what do they translate into on your graph? X-intercepts. You make sure you better hit the x-axis there. You might bounce off it or go through it. That's to be determined, but those are the x-intercepts. So I'm going to give you a really roly-poly one in a little bit, and you're going to go, well, I better hit the x-axis here, 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 here. Okay, that's what, that's what you better hit it, cross it, or maybe even bounce off of it, right? So basically, you're finding those x-intercepts. Next, if a function is increasing, this one's not over here, but if a function's increasing, although we don't know what its slope is numerically, it's always something, right? If a function's increasing, what's your slope? If it goes uphill, your slope is positive. Yep, f prime is positive. So if you're graphing y equals f prime, it means you're going to be above the x-axis. This is going to tell you how to approach those zeros. Do I approach them from above or below? So watch down here. Oh, let's answer this one. If, if a function, if, if a function, if a function is decreasing, then its derivative or its slopes are negative. So we're going to approach from below the x-axis. So watch this guy. Are you ready? Over here, the slope is what? Negative. Because f is decreasing. You might say, well, I don't know where to come in. If you want, if you kind of have OCD, if you kind of look, it's going about down 3 over 1, about negative 3-ish, so maybe you want to go like that. It doesn't particularly matter. Okay? It's decreasing less so, less so, less so, less so. So getting less and less negative, it's going to hit the x-axis, and then it's going to increase symmetrically the same way. You might say, I still don't quite know how to draw that. You actually do, because watch. If this were truly a parabola, it would have been of the form, let's suppose that was 2x squared plus 4x plus 5. Right? When you do its derivative of a parabola, what do you always get? A what? A line. 
So whenever you see a parabola, you better be drawing a line. Okay? Your line needs to hit here. That's a must. I mean, whether you kind of do it a little more steeply, but there's your answer. It's right there. Do you get why I needed to come in from below? I'm graphing the slopes. Y equals the slopes. The slopes are negative over here. So I came in from negative Y's. Do you see how they're kind of running against each other? That's pretty common too. So watch this one over here and think about the analytics of it. What does that look like the graph of Tristan? Oh, uh, uh, what? Not a parabola, but a cubic. When you take the derivative of a cubic, what does it do? Knocks the degree down one. So what better do you graph it? A parabola. Yeah, so basically when you take a derivative on a curvy graph, you kill off a curve because you kill off a power. Did you know that, that every power adds a curve to the graph? The mm -hmm. coordinates, sometimes they flatten out and you can't see the curve, but this would have been one, two, three when I go around there. And when I graph it, now you have to just decide where to hit those from. Negatives. So I'm going to hit from y being negative. Now I'm going to stop right there. Because then this is, so I always make sure that you hit the x axis at the correct spot if you're drawing them by hand. The other thing that I watch for is where you put the vertex of your parabola. It would be, again, I'm graphing the slopes. Slopes are steepness. So it would be where this guy right here is the most steep. If you were climbing up that hill, where would you be struggling the most? Right where? Kind of right in the middle, right, of that hill. Right where it changes from being concave up to, con right about here, I'd say, ooh, that's about the steepest slope, because then they're getting more gradual as I walk up the hill. Do you know what that point is called, where we change from heading? Inflection points. So I'm going to add a fourth, okay? The inflection points, excellent here. The inflection points of, and I can't quite fit it in, but yeah, I can, of <clears throat> f of x translate to the extrema, maxes and mins, of the derivative graph. The inflection points are that part of the hill where it changes concavity, where your stomach kind of drops out, and you're like, oh, like it's the steepest part. So you better have your highest slope. I don't care how high you make it, but it better be above the inflection point. When you check yours with the, your, the key, if yours kind of went like this, you're like, mine's a little wider, I'll be like, you know, not a big deal. But what is a big deal is you didn't hit the zeros. You know what I mean? The, the key is made with computer. I don't expect you to be spot on with a computer program. All right. So I'm going to have you on the back of your packet. Before we move on to the weird ones, we did linear, goes to horizontal. Roly poly poly is just knock down a degree. Go ahead and try. Let's go like this. Like this, I'm gonna make it a little harder than I did last hour. Like this, like that. Actually, I won't make it that hard. Not today. I'll just make it a nice, like that. Sketch the derivative. So this is the graph of k of x. Let's make it L for you. This is the root of x. I want you in a dotted line, I'm gonna do it in red, to graph y equals the root prime. And use all those little tricks I told you. You should have one less curve. Know where to hit the x-axis. Know whether to do it from above or below. And your shape and orientation have to be good. You don't have to be a direct match. So I was going to assign delta math today, but they're a little too picky with how accurate you need to be. Make sure you redo one if you're not like within a centimeter. Again, I told you, that if you hate graphing, this kind of graphing shouldn't bug you because it's not like shifting and should be very easy. All right, what do I want you to have for sure correct? A couple things. What's one of them? The what? The x-intercepts. The derivative is zero right below the extrema. Horizontal tangent line right there, so slope would be zero. Right here, slope would be zero. And right here, slope would be zero. That's a must. Okay? The next thing that's a must is that you at least come in from above or below correctly. 
The slopes over here, are they positive or negative? Positive. So you better approach this from the positive. If you're like, I went steeper. I don't care about that. The next thing I kind of do care about, where you bottom out and start coming back. Because you need to come down and start hitting this dot over here. And I told you the inflection points right there is where the slope would be the most negative. Like you're most likely to fall if you're running down the hill right there. Wouldn't you agree? That will be your minimum. So you should have bottomed out. Now, whether you did it way down or slightly down, but you should show bottoming out there. How'd you do so far? Okay. The next thing is we're graphing the slopes. I'm now going to be above positive, positive, positive. I have all the steepest right there. So I'm just going to make sure I max out there and then I'm going to come back down. It should be something like that. How'd we do? Are we good? Okay, in charge you do. Good. Isabel, you good? All right. So next page, actually I think mine is above here. I think I scrolled. Um, let me get back. We have the weirdos now. Here's the good thing about them. So those graphs I did didn't have any issues. They didn't have discontinuities. They didn't have cusps. They weren't piecewise functions. They were nice. I call them roly poly polys. That will get you a three or four in the AP test because that's the basics of it. Sometimes, though, they put a higher analysis question on there where there's a graph that maybe doesn't have a horizontal tangent line, so you can't have an x-intercept. Or maybe it had some asymptotes, and how do you deal with those? Or maybe there's a cusp or a point where we can't even take a derivative. How do we deal with those? And I'm going to talk about each of those three situations. Are you ready? Here's h of x. It's very nice over here on the left in this curvy part. Right here, the derivative doesn't exist, correct? Okay. The derivative also doesn't exist right here because of the discontinuity. I can't draw a tangent line. You might say you could draw it like this. I'd say, well, which are you following the curve or the line? That's not close. Like, you, you can't. It'd fall out the tip. All right. So you're still thinking, thinking slopes. What are you thinking, Joel? Slopes. What's the slope over here? Very close to what? Zero. So my y's are going to be just slightly above zero. And then they're going to get a little higher and a little higher and a little higher and a little higher and a little higher. And, a little higher. and you might be like, I don't know how high to make up your graphing slopes. Correct? What does the slope look like it is over here? One. Looks about one. So over here, I'd say, well, I'm probably going to just be like up at about one. Like it's going to ride underneath it. So if you go like this, that's a big error. Right? If you kind of go like that, that's not a big error. It should just be under it. Does that make sense? Because the slope over here is not like five or four. It's about one-ish. So I'm going to make mine even a little better. But if you check the key and you're like, oh, I didn't go quite that far under, that's okay as long as you're under. Then right here, the derivative doesn't exist. So my y value doesn't exist. So do you see why I have to put an open dot? I can't take a derivative there. So I open dot it. Now look, what's the slope here, 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 and here? Zero. So I'm going to pick up right along here, and then the derivative doesn't exist. So what am I going to make with my pen? Another open dot. Then what's the slope here, 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 and here? Zero. Done. Oops. I went too far. How's that? You're graphing slopes as best you can. Look at this guy over here. The minute I look at this, I go, this function's increasing everywhere. So where's my derivative graph going to lie? Everywhere. The first quadrant, above the x-axis. My slope over here is extremely positive. If I said, Avery, how steep is this line? She's like, it's almost vertical. A root has got a slope of 100. I'd say, come in from up here. <laughs> Right? And as she travels, she's going to say, it's still really steep, really steep. And I'll say, well, still just make it really steep then. But then as I get over here, what does it start to approach? Zero. So she's going to come in like that. She's going to check it on the key. And maybe the key went like this. Am I going to say she did a bad job? No. <laughs> okay. It's pretty good. You have to be in the general orientation of it. So a very steep slope, and they're still steep, they're still steep, but then they start to approach zero. 
That's good enough for me. All right. Next weirdo. What's weird about this guy? It's got a vertical asymptote. So think about what happens to my slopes. Slightly negative, but almost zero. Slightly negative, very slightly, very slightly. And then it takes a sharp turn to the negative. But they were all negative. So I'm going to be below this axis. Below, 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 below. And then I'm going to take a sharp drop. So this red should actually be, I went a little too far with my pen. This red's going to be like this. Watch this though. What's the slope over here? If I said, hey, the other Tristan, give me the slope over here. He said, I don't know, it's almost vertical. It's very, 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 very negative. Correct? So you better come in from very, 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 very negative. But then it's still negative, 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 and starts to approach what? Zero. And by it, I mean the slope. So it's going to look something like that. That funnel graph going down. What do you think? The last one's really easy. It has curved depravity. It's all linear, which means what is your derivative graph going to look like? All what? Horizontal lines. Mm -hmm. But you might have some open dots. This is AP Physics. Their position graphs always look like this, and they would be graphing velocity. And they, they'd have to know that velocity is change in distance over change in time, and they'd say, well, this has a velocity of negative 1, and they'd plot it. And the velocity is negative 1 all the way until I get over to here. And then the velocity is different. That's what they do in AP Physics. What's the velocity here? It looks like it's going up 2. I should be saying the derivative. Up 3 over 2. So open dot. Why an open dot? There's no derivative there. Yeah. And it's going to go over to here. And then I'm going to stop. And then what's happening? Now, in physics, they'd be talking about the velocity here, right? What is the derivative right here? Zero. Yep, so I hook up to there and go like that. What's your assignment? Worksheet A. And then check it. If you did a good job, be done. If you're on the struggle bus with it, then do what? Do worksheet B. You have plenty of time to finish A. They don't take long. Make sure you check it, though. I'm going to tell you this. There's one of them where the graph falls on itself. So when these are generated to get these to screenshot, I have to enter a function. I use GeoGebra. And I enter a function in there and it graphs it. Right? For the key, I have it graph its what? Derivative. So its key is like 100% accurate. You're going to be 80 to 100% accurate. But there's one of them where I did the original function and had it graph the derivative that landed right on top of it. What do you think the function was that I entered? Great question. What would you say? B to the x. Yep. One of those is the graph of b to the x, and its derivative is itself. It had to get the graph from somewhere, right? <laughs> Sometimes I screenshot them off my emulator. Tell me, you'll be 